Sometimes I get halfway through doing my tutorial and I realize I haven't been recording and then I have to uh, take the recording off of Facebook for later when I put it onto YouTube. Anyway, we are going to be making a paper piece block. This is what the block looks like, sort of. <laughs> so this is the first one that I made and I don't feel like I got a good enough um, contrast in the fabric. So, but it's still cute and I might use it for something. Hi, Edith. And, um, but what I wanted to do, I just wanted to do a paper piecing tutorial for you guys, a foundation paper piecing tutorial, because um, we had Yvette in the group last month showing how to do paper piecing. And she does it one way and I do it a different way and no way is right or wrong, but since I do it a different way, I thought maybe I would show you guys my way. Excuse me while I plug in my iron um, to see because you might like one way or the other better. Um, and so this is a cute little flower block with a star in the middle. I decided to make the second one out of Liberty Fabrics. And I've gone ahead and pieced most of the pieces and I'm going to show you just two pieces because otherwise it would take too long. So um, we're, I'm going to show you how to do these two pieces of the foundation and then we're going to put the whole block together. And then the other thing is I'm just going to show you one of the flowers that I did for the applique flowers. And when I did this, I did the stems, my usual way to make quarter inch stems for the larger flowers, but I wanted to show you how I actually make this a little bit smaller for the small flower because I feel like these are a little bit chunky. Even for these flowers, they're a little bit chunky. I know that, but um, I don't mind that. It looks kind of folk arty to me and I kind of like that, but I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make it an eighth inch instead of a quarter inch because this is a very tiny flower that's gonna go up here. So, um, so I'm gonna show you that. And then these are really awesome for putting our buttons on course, because this whole thing was about doing buttons. So the big button fits perfectly in the center of that big flower and the little buttons go great in the center of the little flowers. So fits perfect. So um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get started with um, paper piecing these little pieces. So the first thing you're going to need is something like a postcard or in this case, because they're small pieces, I'm just going to use a business card, which works great. Um, so the first thing I do is I take the number one piece, which is the big piece on these, and I put a little bit of fabric glue on the back and I glue down my um, pieces of fabric. So what I did um, for these pieces is I just cut two inch squares. Um, they're going to be really big for these little tiny edge pieces, um, but I, that's fine. I mean, you know, you're going to have a little bit of scrap. That's okay. Um, but if you want to make them smaller, if you're a good foundation paper piecer and you're not worried about the pieces being too small, you can make those pieces smaller. Um, I actually did these first, this first one that I did, I did with one and a half inch squares and it worked just fine. Um, but I went ahead and did two inch squares of all the pieces to make these because that worked out to be, you know, plenty big. So, um, so what I'm going to do, this one I've already trimmed, but this one hasn't been trimmed yet, the first trim. So, um, what you do is take your two inch piece and you're going to put it right on the corner of that foundation. So if you've trimmed your paper, it doesn't have to be right on the line, but if you've trimmed close to the line, you can put a two inch square on here and that'll be plenty big enough to cover that um, large piece on your paper piece. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a business card or a postcard and put it right on that line between piece number one and piece number two, and then fold back. Sorry, Amazon shows up every single time <laughs> I'm doing a tutorial, so excuse my dog. Um, anyway, you're going to put your postcard or your business card on the line between piece number one and piece number two, and you're going to fold your paper back and crease it. And then you're going to trim off a quarter of an inch from your um, from your card. So I've already done that on this one, but I'm going to go ahead and do it on this one. So this is piece number two on here. 
So I'm just going to put my card there and I'm going to fold back the paper. And I'm going to get my ruler. And thanks to Sally, I have a new rotary blade in my 45 millimeter rotary cutter, so I don't have to use my 60 millimeter. <laughs> so um, what I've done is I've just put my um, my ruler a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the card, and I'm just going to go ahead and trim off that piece. Oh, wow. This is so new and so sharp that I didn't think it actually had cut. <laughs> I thought I still had the, the blade um, cover on. Okay, so that cut nice and easy. Um, so now that we've got that trimmed away, so the reason I do this is this way you don't have to guess where you're putting your next piece. Your next piece is going to be for number two. And this is going to be the piece that's your seam between number one and number two. And also what I did, so on these pieces, I hadn't put the dark and the light marks, so I went ahead and pencil marked them. But on the pieces that I sent you with your pattern, it says D or L, so you know which color of um, each of your pieces you're going to need. Oh, I should have started out with that. Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. You have dark and light, and then light and dark. And then for your center pieces, if you can see that, the little star in the center, you have a light and a dark there. And then for your leaf pieces out on the outside, you have a light and a dark. So what I did on your paper pieces, um, I didn't do it on my own, but on the ones that I did for you, I put a D and an L in each of those places so you know which color to put on each of those. So I should have said that to begin with. Okay. So this is between piece number one and piece number two. So piece number two is the light piece. And on this, I decided that I wanted to use the same light for both the, for both pieces. This one I used uh, two different lights and two different darks. And on this one, I used two different darks, but I used the same light on all of them. And that's this fabric right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take, because it says L, that means it's the light piece. So I'm going to take that light piece and you want, and if it's facing me, I know it's going the right way because I want it to be facing the right side of this fabric, which is going down. And then I'm going to put it right on that quarter inch seam that I just cut. And if while this is folded backward, that fabric covers that whole piece that's folded backwards. So you can see it goes from here all the way to here and up to here and down to here and it covers that whole triangle piece. So I know if I sew this line, this will cover, this fabric will cover this piece. And it always works out that way. If you have your piece folded back, you have your fabric underneath and it completely covers that piece, you know that it's going to cover it when you sew it and fold it backwards. So that's how, when I first learned to paper piece, I'm gonna tell you a story. <laughs> When I first learned a paper piece, I hated paper piecing because I liked things that had triangles. Obviously, I'm making things with triangles. And if you have anything that has an angle, it's very, very hard to figure out which way to put your fabric so that it covers that angle. It's very hard to figure that out. Um, and I mean, once you become very proficient at paper piecing, it's easy for you because you've done it a million times. And you know, oh, it goes opposite what you think it will because when you flip the paper back, it's opposite. But my brain just doesn't work that way. So this is the easiest way to explain it. If this piece of fabric underneath covers all the way around that piece of paper, you know for certain that when you flip this over, it's going to fit. So that's why I always do it this way. So now what I'm going to do is go flip this back go to my sewing machine and sew this line. Um, there is another technique using freezer paper where you don't actually flip the paper back, but we're not doing freezer paper this time, we're just doing regular. So again, and I'm gonna go ahead and do both of these pieces at the same time, so I'll show you. This is um, 
going to be flipped back. This has already been trimmed to a quarter inch. I'm putting it along the edge of that other piece of fabric that I'm sewing it to. That piece of fabric is face up so that it is um, right sides together with the, with the first piece. And then I'm making sure that it covers all the way around this triangle here. So it goes all the way around so I know for certain that it's big enough. So now I'm just gonna go over to my machine and I'm going to sew that seam on that line. And what you want to do is go ahead and sew from the edge of the seam allowance, which is the dotted line on here, all the way across to the seam allowance on the other side. And then I go like one stitch past that. And you can't really um, peel apart, so I'm going to put them back together. You can't really um, chain piece when you do paper piecing. You can if you, I mean, you can if you really want to, I guess, but I don't like to go across all the piece of the rest of the fabric, so I just don't, I just stop and cut my, cut my thread. So that's our first seam. Now we're just going to flip these back. I was just checking to make sure that I did remember to turn the recording on, and I did. <laughs> okay, so to get these super flat, I love to use this um, seam roller, and this came in the one of the first tilde boxes. Um, so if you've been around for a long time, you've seen these before. But this gets it really, really nice and flat, and you actually don't even need to use an iron, but I do just because I, I don't know, I just do. But anyway. This gets really, really nice and flat. And it makes it super, super nice once it's pieced. Okay, so that's our first little um, seam that we're gonna do. Now you look on the back and you look for number three. So this is number three. I'm gonna use my card and put it along that seam. So, oh, and if you're doing the other way of paper piecing, at, after you had sewn that, you would have had to go before you ironed it and trim that seam. But because we've already done that, we don't need to do that. That's just an extra step that doesn't need to be done anymore. So we actually trim beforehand. So this is along the, the piece between number three and number two. And I'm flipping the paper back just like I did before. And I'm going to trim that off. Oh my goodness, it's so nice to have a fresh blade. So nice to have a fresh blade. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this one. Seam number three. And we're going to trim that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Just making sure I hadn't gotten crooked there. Trim this off. Okay, and then number three is the outside. So it goes one is the center, two is the center, three is the outside, and four is the inside. So if we remember that it's the outside, we know that that's the green piece. And this one says light, so that's going to be these. I'm using these as my light leaves. They're almost white. They have little flowers on them. And now I'm just gonna put this on here along where the seam is again, and make sure that that fabric covers all the way around that triangle. And just the same thing as before, this is a light one also. It says L there. And I thought it would make it easier for you if I did those patterns with the dark and light marked for you so you don't have to think about it. 
Hi, Kim. So now I'm just going to go sew that seam between number two and number three. This is going to be a little bit longer tutorial because paper piecing, we're doing these two pieces of paper piecing. So a little bit longer than normal, but that's okay. I like spending time with you guys. Oh, also, if you are paper piecing, you want to make your stitch length a little bit shorter than what you normally have because it perforates your paper. It makes it easier to pull your paper off later. Now, I didn't do that with these. So I usually put it around 1.8 to 1.5, somewhere around there. I'm just going to sew it a second time. It won't hurt it. This is Liberty. It's nice and thin anyway. Okay, so we're just going to put this back. Doesn't look like much before you get it all cut. But... This gets these seams so nice and flat. Love it. Okay, now we just have one more. Oh, Kim, look, I'm using your business card for this. <laughs> So we're doing now the seam between three and four. I mean two and four, sorry. In this case, it's between two and four. And then we're just going to cut that again at a quarter of an inch. If you have an add a quarter ruler, they're great. I have one somewhere, but it has disappeared. Um, actually, it's not because I, you guys probably think I'm really disorganized <laughs> because you hear me say I've lost it. But the truth is I have moved my uh, business four times since the last time I did any kind of paper piecing project. So um, it's probably in storage in a box somewhere and someday I will find it again. But at the moment, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Okay, so the last piece for all of these is this center piece. And again, it's light on both of these pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and use this light piece. I'm using a dark blue and a light blue on this one for the stars in the center. And again, I'm putting that along the seam allowance, making sure that it covers all the way around that piece. And don't forget when you are looking to make sure that it covers a quarter of an inch away from where that um, point is too because um, otherwise sometimes you end up with a little hole where your points are. Now I'm just going to go sew that, that seam. <laughs> you thought that looked familiar. <laughs> Hi Shelly. Oh I'm so glad you liked your box. Those spring boxes are just so much fun. I was telling Sally um, this morning that the summer box is half full already because I got a bunch of the stuff for it <laughs> in the mail this weekend. But it doesn't go on sale until June, so got some time for that. I'm really excited about the summer box. I'm I was excited about the spring box, but I'm really excited about the summer box too. I think doing the doing the seasonal boxes is super fun. And again, I'm just sewing from the um, seam allowance all the way to the other side of the seam allowance on the opposite side. If you ever have um, paper piecing projects where your seams cross each other, just make sure that you don't cross actually cross the sewing part. So 
So say this is your, your sewing line, you would stop on one side. One side you could go all the way to the seam allowance, but the other one you would want to stop right at the point because otherwise you can't get the paper out. Okay, so that was our last scene for this part. I'm just gonna make them nice and flat. Okay, now all you need to do is, I keep saying all you need to do. <laughs> okay, so turn it over and you're just going to cut right along that seam allowance line on all the sides. And these have, um, little, the dog ears cut off on the corners. So you have, um, have a way of seeing where exactly where they're supposed to fit together. And these dog ears, I just cut freehand like this. My little jar for my um, Liberty scraps is getting full. I'm gonna have to start a second jar. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those little scraps, but something. Make confetti out of them or something. Some of the pieces are big enough to do something there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now because all these pieces are the same um, shape, there's a couple different ways you can put these together. So what you want to make sure though is that your green is on the outside and your two, well, yeah, green because these are the leaves of the flower. And then your center star is on the inside. So make sure you don't mix those two bits up. And you want to make sure that your center goes dark white, dark white. That's the most important part. But you could do it so that the petals are like this. We need a light one here. Here we go. I want light. so that you have the big light petals and the big dark petals together. You could do it that way. That looks pretty good. Looks good when I look in the, um, on the monitor. So you have dark petals and then light petals, or you could do it the way I did this one, where I did light, dark, light, dark, all the way around. So it just depends, whatever you like best. I think I'm gonna try it the other way and see if I like it better that way. But I think I liked it the way it was with the, let's see, darks next. With the same color petals together. Nope, that one's white. Nope, I like it this way. I 
think I like it like that. So that's how I'm going to put it together. Oh, you're saving your scraps. Oh, I oh I've seen those when where you put them all on and then you kind of um, applicate down with sticky stuff and then quilt over it. Is that how you do that, Sally? Okay, so what I'm going to do is make these into squares by sewing two triangles, two triangles, two triangles. So they're going to go like this. So I'm going to put them on my ruler to carry them. Makes it easier. And I want to make sure they stay like I put them. <laughs> so um, when I put these two triangles together, I could have showed you this over there as well. I'm going to take a pin and put it through the point in this piece and then through the point in the back piece. Make sure that that's the same. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Because even though it looks like they should be, well, that one actually did work out right. But sometimes, even though they look like they should be fitting together perfectly, they don't. So the easiest way to make sure that they're right together is to do it like that. And then I put a pin in. I know some people say that this makes them. Um, I use very thin pins, for one thing. These are very, very fine. And so I find that it works out just fine to put things in. And then I take out the ones that are in the points. And then you sew right along that line, just like you would if you were piecing the rest of the block. So we're going to sew right along that straight line along the seam and all the way out to the edge. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for all four pieces. I probably should have um, gotten most of these done before we started. I didn't think of that. So you're going to have to watch me do it, the whole thing. <laughs> oh, that one worked out good. Sometimes it works out, right? And that one worked out too. I think it helps having the um, dog ears cut off too, because it makes it really easy for you to figure out where they're supposed to fit together. And the one thing I know is you need to have really good contrast. And I think these florals that I picked probably don't have as good a contrast as they could. Um, it might look really good with um, a couple of different solids or um, the small florals work fine, but that's why I decided to use solids for the centers because I knew that that would give it a good contrast, at least for that star part in the center. But I literally used to cry if I had to do 
paper piecing, foundation paper piecing. I just couldn't stand it. Now, I don't mind it. I actually kind of like it. If ever I was in a bee where, they, where I had to do paper piecing, oh, I just hated it. But now I'm, now I like it. I wish I had known this, the way, you know, this technique before. Because I could have. Could have been enjoying it all this time instead of hating it. our last scene for this part. The neat thing about paper piecing, foundation paper piecing, is that you can make some really intricate designs that you wouldn't be able to do if you were just doing regular pieces. This might be the only paper piece block we do for this, but I thought we had we should have at least one. I mean, if you're gonna do a sampler, you need to do a sampler of every kind of paper or every kind of piecing, I think. Well, not every kind, but you know, at least most of the normal, usual kinds of classic piecing. That way you can say you've done them all. Okay, so I have all of my little four um squares done. And what I'm going to do to make it easier to piece these together is I'm going to take off the paper that is on the seam allowance on all of these. So I'm just ripping the paper off of the seam allowances because it'll make it a lot easier to piece these four pieces together. After I get this paper off, I'm going to go over and press them. And I think because these are small and there's a lot of seams, I'm going to press them open. Normally I would press them to the side even with this, but I think I'm gonna press these ones open to make them a little flatter. There aren't that many pieces in this, so there aren't that many pieces of paper to pull off, honestly. Um, so I didn't think it was bad. There's only three pieces in each of these little these little um, sections, so or four, I should say. If you ever have a problem getting your paper off, um, easiest thing to do is run the back side of your, not the pointy sharp side, but the back side of your um, seam ripper. So this is the back side, the side that's not sharp. If you run it along the paper, it will make it um, come off a lot easier. I'm not having a problem with mine, but just thought I'd let you know that. That's another tip. Another tip for me to you. This is the last one.
Okay, now I'm just going to take them over and press them real quick. Oh yeah, my sticker. I got that from um, the Moda Market in a Box. They did a Moda um, since we've all been staying home with, you know, the virus that shall not be named. Um, Moda is doing what they call Market in a Box, and so they're sending us um, just little trinkets and things in a box with their catalog for their fabrics and their notions. And um, that was one of the things that was in my last catalog. And I'm getting the fabric collection that goes with that. It's called, um, it's called, sorry, concentrating on what I'm doing. <laughs> it's called Songbook. And it's got um, a panel that has hymns on it and one of them is that it is well with my soul and so that's one of the one of the graphics from that collection i'm not buying the whole collection i'm just buying a um, kind of a curated bundle and the panels for people who are interested in that sort of thing i've made um a couple of little mini quilts. One of them I've already shipped off to its new owner. Uh, the other one is sitting here. I'll show it to you. Hold on. This one still needs to be quilted. This one has amazing grace on it. Oh yeah, see, you knew it was songbook. <laughs> okay, so there's my four little squares. And this is how they're gonna go together with that blue star in the center. So now I just have to put these two pieces together and these two pieces together. So today, let's see, I shipped out a few boxes today, and yesterday I shipped out all of the Tilda boxes, the monthly boxes, and tomorrow I'm going to start working on the Liberty boxes. I was waiting on some packing materials for the Liberty boxes because there's something in the Liberty boxes a little bit fragile. So I decided to put um, that item into okay in this case I am matching up these two seams. So so this looks like it's off, but that's because I didn't cut it right on the line here. I have the I have the um, pin going into the corner, so I know for sure that that's correct. So it may look like it's off a little bit, but it's not. That's the good. That's the reason is we like having paper piecing because <laughs> we can be sure that it's going to be right when we sew it. Um. So I'm waiting on the little bubble sleeves for that item for the Liberty box because I don't want it to get broken when it gets shipped to you guys. And they're going to actually. They came. <laughs> that's what was. That's what just came from Amazon when my dogs were barking a minute ago. <laughs> so they are here, and so tomorrow I can start shipping out the Liberty box. Okay.
sewed over that first pin. Don't tell anybody. Okay, there's that one. Let me make sure I'm sewing them the right, sewing the right parts together here. Sorry, I'm so quiet. I just ran out of things to say. <laughs> Sally, you talk, because you're good at that. <laughs> Sally is my built in entertainment. Normally, on box sewing week, I'm really stressed out and really tired, but because I'm so ahead of the game this month, I am not stressed out, which is a good thing. Because I wasn't even due to ship these out until next Wednesday, and already half of them are gone. Okay, so there's our first piece. And here's our second piece. Now I just need to put these parts together. And I am going to take the paper off just right there where that seam is going to cross. And go press them. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. <laughs> I always tell people when, if I meet them at market, because I'm the quiet one, I always tell people, yeah, I'm the one that was with the redheaded girls. <laughs> Because everybody remembers Sally. Yes, I know I didn't switch the the I didn't switch the camera back, but that's just because I was only going to be there for a second. See, I'm back here. Back here. Okay. Now I'm just going to piece these two pieces together. And then I'm real quick going to show you how I do the stems on the applique one. It's the same way I always do stems, but I know some of you haven't been around that long, so you might not have seen it. I always think everybody has seen everything I've done, but I always then I realize that that's not the case. Okay, so I'm putting a pin into the point of the star because I want my points to match. I want that center point to match. I actually didn't do that on my last one and they still came out okay. So maybe this paper piecing, maybe there is something to that paper piecing thing. What do you think? I'm putting a pin right in the center and then right in the center on this side. So I make sure that they're right together. And then I'm putting it. So I am excited. I'm going to keep going with this um, sampler for the next couple of weeks until it's finished. <laughs> and some, like I've been doing two blocks every week because I promised that I would for six weeks do two blocks. But 
I, the next few weeks, I'm probably just going to do one block and maybe, um, I might do two on some weeks and I might only do one on some weeks. But I think I'm going to do a few more um, embroidery ones because I really like that. I think they came out really cute, the ones that we did that were embroidered. I might do a couple more applique ones. And we're definitely going to do a couple more piece ones because I want to do those long rectangles. And that one um, spool block that's in the corner. So we're definitely going to do those. And we're going to do the little nine patches because I think they're really cute to put um, to put buttons in your nine patches. Look, it came out really cute. Oh, <laughs> I mixed it up. Of course I did. Yep, I did. Oh, well, guess what? I like it that way anyway, so I'm going to leave it. See, and mix these up. But I don't mind that. That's okay. It kind of looks like a it kind of looks like a pansy this way because of this. It looks like a pansy. I like it. And the star came out right in the center, see? <laughs> oh well, I made a mistake. Sorry you guys. Cause I was trying to talk and do it at the same time. But I think it looks cute, so I'm going to leave it. Kind of like that. It looks like a pansy. I like pansy. But see, my little star came out perfect in the middle. And then your little button can go in the center if you want it to. Just like that. Okay. So what I do when I do stems. I make a straight line, so I usually use my ruler to make sure that my line is straight. And um, I do a reality check and I lay everything down and make sure that they're all in the place that I want them. And then I just go and use my sewing machine and I sew. Um, so all I've done is taken a one inch piece of fabric, folded it in half. This is a raw edge and I just sew a quarter inch seam. When I make these quarter inch ones, I just sew a quarter inch seam then I flip over the piece of fabric and I applique it down. That's what I did with these. But because I want this one to be a little bit thinner because this, this flower is really small, I'm going to make this a 3 8 inch seam. I'm going to change it because it's a quarter inch seam right now. And I'm going to make it a 3 8 inch seam instead. And that is going to give me an 8 inch um, stem. For this. So I'm just going to add a little bit to this. And you guys can do whatever kind of applique you like. I did raw edge. I haven't done raw edge in years and years and years and I thought why not do raw edge on this because it's just going to be a wall hanging. I don't have to worry about it. Okay so what I'm doing now is just trimming my seam allowance because otherwise this fabric will not cover it. So I've trimmed it away to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then when I fold this over, I can applique it down on this edge. And I could even, if you want to do machine applique, because this could all be done by machine. If you use a, um, a blanket stitch on your machine, you could do this all by machine. Um, I did this by hand with some embroidery floss, but you can do it on your machine. And if you wanted to do this on your machine, you could also sew this down by machine. Um, but I did it by hand, and I'll do this one by hand as well. But that just made a really small, thin um, stem, which looks nicer with this smaller flower. So let me press this real quick. So it's a much nicer size to go with this small flower.
And then it will get little buttons in the center of all the flowers, just like that. So um, I'm not impressed with myself for making a mistake when I was showing this to you, but um, that's typical of me anyway, isn't it? But I think it's pretty cute. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. And I'm going to put a little button right in the center. Even though my star is perfect, I'm going to put a button in the center anyway because I like it. Just like that. So these are all our little flowers from today. And thanks for coming to see me. And if you guys are in the club, we are having our um, member chat on Thursday. And let's see. It's the middle of the middle of the month, so it's just show and tell time. Wait, did we have it last Thursday? Now I'm getting confused. I'm gonna have to look. Hold on, you guys. I might I might be lying. Maybe we don't have one this week. Sally, keep me straight. Or do we have one this week or do we not? I'm looking at the calendar. Hold on, you guys. I don't want to tell you something wrong here. Today is the 13th and the calendar says, nope, not this week. We have our members meeting next week on the 22nd. Sorry about that. And then we have Saturday show day on the 24th. That's good though, because I'm doing boxes this week. It would be bad if we had it this week. So it's next week on the 22nd and yeah. So I'll see you then. But before that on Tuesday, we will have another tutorial and it might be a button sampler block and it might be something else because I have ideas. I have lots and lots of ideas. <laughs> Thanks girls. It's good to see you and I'll be sending love with your boxes this week. Have a good rest of the week, you guys. Um, also, I will get a picture of one of the blocks that is actually done the right way <laughs> and put it in um, the, up, uh, the update email this week so that you will have um, an idea of how it's supposed to go together when you do it the right way. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.